Coming to the stage is someone that I found to be very intriguing. I'm intrigued. I'm curious. And let me tell you why I'm intrigued and why I am so curious. Hardly ever do you find in gospel music such creativity in one body. I don't hear y'all saying nothing yet. Y'all sleeping? Why does thing say 11 minutes? That ain't right. <laughs> My nephew is here. Santa, where are you? Are you in here? But hardly do you find creativity like this and I've, I've watched my kids love the music play Ty and Diedrich around the house to where I'm sick of hearing them and I wanted to have a conversation probably I saw a video about a year and a half ago and I said I, I've got to have a conversation and find out more about this man that has all this energy to jump from one side of the stage to the other side of the stage and, and the variety of music and mixing, mixing choir and then this 808 thing that he did. I said, okay, now, I, I, I want to know. And I want to find out where his inspiration comes from. How did he get started? And just find out more about Ty Tribet. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to stand to your feet and make a war leap of noise for Ty Tribet! Listen, Ty, thank you for being a yes. Yes, sir. You could have easily been a no. <laughs> thank <laughs> you, I'm, I'm so glad that you are a yes. Now, I'm excited to see what you've just done because you did the Stella Award. Yes, sir. Now, how, how was that? That was an amazing experience. That was, that was very, very fun to be out. We back. How y'all doing, number one? How y'all doing? <laughs> Good to see everybody. Uh, to be out again, you know, the pandemic has, you know, kept everybody inside last year. So just to see everybody in person was good. And to host the Stellas, was, it was fun. I just went out there. And uh, my family was with me. So my wife wow. styled me and all that. And my wow. girls danced with me. So we basically just took a little family vacation. I didn't get to go to any of the, you know, the little Stellar events and stuff like that. We were just chilling with the family in Nashville. So it was a good moment for us as well. So, so we haven't seen it yet. Do you know when it, when it, it airs? It airs August the 1st. Okay. August 1st on, can I say the network? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On BET. Make sure y'all check it out. Myself and Ja'Kalen Carr is the host. Ja'Kalen. Woo! Woo! Was, I wanted her to be here as well, but she was already booked. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> now, when it comes to the Stella Awards, what you just did, yeah. who was your favorite performance? I can't say. I will, after I said the lines, I went to the back. So I didn't see anyone. So you're not gonna see it until it air. Huh? You're not gonna see it until it airs. I'm not gonna see it until it airs, exactly. I can wow. already say that uh, they said the, the Clark sisters, you know, perform, so I already know oh. I'm gonna enjoy that. Uh, I did see Pastor Mike. Okay. Pastor Mike Jr. was, was very, very, very good. I wow. love him and everything he's doing now. Yeah. So that's the only thing I saw so far. So your creativity yeah. and energy. Yeah. What, who, where did that come from? I mean, who did you see somebody else jumping around and you just got hold no, of No, when I grew up, I grew up Pentecostal, apostolic, how come oh. chicken dinners, you know what I'm did saying? Did you say apostolic? Apostolic? You were baptized in Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> and filled with the precious gifts. Yeah, let's say make sure now, folks say the apostolic ain't sure. Uh, there shall be light in the evening time. There you go. I know how to play it. I don't okay. know all the words. <laughs> I don't know the words, I don't know how to play. Wait. Amen. <laughs> we had baptism yesterday, and about 30 people were, were baptized Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so, so I grew up like that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't hear a whole lot of music. We wasn't allowed to listen to circular music. Oh, you said circular. Circular. <laughs> <laughs> and I mistakenly say that because I have a speech impediment. <laughs> But circular music. Secular. Oh yeah, we weren't allowed to listen to none of that. So, um, but when I, I hear it. I hear it in your music. Oh yeah, I, I, I snuck it. I, I snuck. That's, <laughs> I, I didn't get to that part of the story. Uh, yeah, so I would sneak and listen to first like Joe Sample, instrumentals, yeah. uh, Yellow Jackets, Weather Report, all these jazz bands and fusion bands, and then that kind of developed uh, my sound that we 
that kind of just opened me up to a whole other world. So there's no, you haven't had any like training or nothing? It's My hard. mom gave me uh, piano lessons for about two months until she realized that I was playing by ear. Mm. So my conductor, you know, he would come every week and he would, I would say, could you play it again just one more time? And he would play it and I would learn it while he's playing it. Mm. And then I would do it. And my mom was like, you cheating, you wasted my money. You know what I mean? So uh, my dad plays as well. So I grew up watching my dad on the organ and my mom directing the choir. Wow. So that's all I knew. So music, music was everywhere in your home. Uh -huh. Now, your favorite artist, your influence, who was your musical influence? Oh, man, you're going to ask me that. Um, <laughs> oh, it, it's, it's too many. It's too many. Um, uh, <laughs> my, it, it can be gospel. It can be circular. Circular. I think <laughs> where I, when, when I draw from, cre try to get creative and draw uh -huh. from a well of creativity, I go to Jaco Pastorius. Hmm. Ja Thank you, Jonathan Slocum. Who, That's my man right there. What's uh, up? Uh, who, Jocko Pastorius. Who in the whole hell? I'm in the heaven. <laughs> is that? That's like some tongs. Who's that? He's a bass, he's a bass player, but it's so much more than just a bass player. Okay. One of the most melodic, rhythmic, out-the-box thinker as it pertains to his approach mm. to music. So, you know, bass players, their part is just whole, the way he... It just opens me up, so I love Jocko Pastorius. And, and that's amazing because your music opens us up. Right, right. And so you, you're influenced by someone who enlightens you, and then mm -hmm. you turn around and, and enlighten us. Can I be honest, too? When I first was listening to uh, gospel music, even the gospel music, James Hall. Man, when James Hall and worship and pray, it was like the changes he would come up with. Yeah. I, 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 and to this day, I tell, every, I tell everybody, even him, I love that. That really opened me up. Like, oh, it could sound like this. Oh, we could we could take those chances. We could do that. So hearing that really helped. And like Richard Smallwood yeah. merging classical yeah. with that as well. And yeah. uh, even the wine is brought to me an R and B vibe. Yeah. To, so there's different expressions in gospel. I, I just kind of like yeah. pull from everybody. Yeah, James Hall is a wizard. No, for real. Yeah. He is actually a maestro. He's like out of here and I always give him his flowers because I honor him to that degree because the music that he puts out is unmatched and yeah. I, I and, and I, I love I and love I, him for that and I, I, yeah I love to to hear um, artists praise and you know and acknowledge each each other mm -hmm. that, he was one great. of the first ones to embrace me as well I would come up to his oh, wow. min, the musicals and all that stuff when we were very very you know young getting started he embraced me early as well so I love that we got to have a relationship as well. So when did you, what was, your, what was your first Thai tribute song? Just shout it out that you heard. Is what, Making a Way? No Way. Somebody saying No Way, somebody saying Victory. Okay. <laughs> you said Making a Way. I, I, I didn't, I was like, you got the wrong artist. That, that's that boy. What's the name? Well, I'm trapping. You made a way. Concepts and ideas, all right. Oh, wow. All you saw was jumping, Aunt Vicky. <laughs> what an honor to have Vicky Winers in the building. I love you, Aunt Vicky. <laughs> uh, I mean, a legend. Okay, I heard my baby mama. She said, victory. Victory. So was that your first breakout song? I guess as far as the industry is concerned, yeah, victory was like a huge breakout song. Yeah. Now, now, industry is different than ministry. Right. So what, how did you get into it? the industry? What was your break in the industry? The break in the industry was the Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt soundtrack. So, y'all remember that movie? It was a movie, an animated movie about the life of Moses, if you don't know about it. And actually before that, we was in the Wrigley's Chewing Gum competition. Mm -hmm. So we won the regional one in Philly, and then we won the, the national one in Chicago, mm -hmm. where we got a record deal offer from Malico that I did, did not take. But from that exposure, this movie deal uh, came. So Buster and Shivani in LA, these producers came, recorded us, we was on that album, and from that, so much, cause it was, a, it, it was, it came, three CD, three soundtracks came out, a country one, an R&B mm. one, and like an inspirational one. And so at the movie premiere, we were like the only choir, so they would have us, could you sing for like, Faith Hill was on there, so we sung with Faith Hill, Whitney Houston was there, Mary J. Blige, all these people. From that we got, with Faith Hill, and so we started traveling and doing tours with Faith Hill. Mm. Then we started doing things with Don Henley and John wow. Mellencamp, and we started doing things with, uh, we, we were out, we were mainstream before we even did our first gospel album. Wow. 
So I went from my small church of about 100 people, how come I sat to the boat, to these stadiums and the Country Music Awards and Jay Leno. I'm like, it was a culture shock, bro. Yeah. But I appreciated it and I loved every second of it. And so we were on, we're on, it's a, it's a whole lot. Like Christy, wow. uh, not Christina Aguilera, Jessica Simpson's mm. Christmas CD. Cry Me a River, that's me playing on there. Wow. That's me playing. Timbaland, we was in the studio with Timbaland. Wow. That's me playing Cry Me a River and I did the vocal arrangements for that. I got like $2, he got like 200 million. But anyway. <laughs> I was going, you know, uh, your your vocal, and I haven't shared this, but your vocal for me was totally different. I, had, I didn't hear a man's voice mm. that was like yours. Mm. You had a, a rasp. Mm. Um, it almost sounded like a joyful pain. <laughs> okay. And, and the way that you you sang it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I you like can you can feel it. I like that. And you can feel it. Yeah. So, uh, how, how do you do you know? that you are extremely, extremely unique for a male artist in gospel? Let, let me say yes, but I didn't find out in, in the honor way. Mm -hmm. I found out in the rejection way. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> you understand, now it's celebrated by some, but for the most part, I realized my difference from being rejected first, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Especially by the church at first, uh, religious church, very legalistic, all of that stuff. When I started growing my hair, yeah, you are definitely burning in a lake of fire. Yeah, this, uh, Bishop Bernard Jordan. I'm over sorry, there. Bishop Bernard. Remember, remember he had them long oh, dreads. Man of God, <laughs> had them I long decided. dreads. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you couldn't do that, so I, I got kicked out. I got you know all that ostrac ostracism. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's new. It's new. We word. were ostracized. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how I realized I was different, but I knew I, I knew I was on to something. I knew God was, I, I, I felt like I knew this was God. It was right for me. It fit me. And I was honoring God. I wasn't dishonoring him. I wasn't, mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? I didn't know what was wrong with it besides the fact that it didn't fit your system. Hmm. I don't know what's wrong with what I'm doing. It's encouraging. The young people are into it. The older young people are into it. But it doesn't fit your format. Hmm. And I had to learn to be cool with that. Hmm. So... Are you interested in teaching others yeah. as it relates to how to be their unique self yes, in, in, the, in, in a square box? Yes, sir. I'm doing a, 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 a mentorship, a music mentorship program called The Chosen coming up uh, August. It's going to be a virtual thing, so if y'all hear about it, check it out, where I get people from all scopes of the, the music industry to kind of mentor mentor, because I heard that mentorship is wisdom without the pain, right? Mm. So if I can get the young ones coming up that may be different, because now hip hop is like coming up and the church is doing the same thing with that. So if we can kind of help give them the tools that they need to come. So I got a thing called The Chosen. Um, I'm starting my own label after this album so I can get other artists, you understand what I'm saying? It's gonna be crazy, yeah. but to the glory of God and I'm excited about it, you yeah. know? I, f I think that is um, what we all supposed to do once we, we get what we get and we give it and help somebody else. Right. Um, when it comes to ministry, because I did not know, I did not know that you, what the devil is that? I see that little thing, oh, right, I saw right. it, there you go. Um, the, <laughs> excuse me. Um, when I just, you were pastoring. Yes, sir. So how did that happen? I felt like if anybody knew me or followed me, I preach at every engagement, right? So <laughs> people used to be mad, they'd be like, sing! You know, <laughs> I would take like 20 minutes in the show. It started when uh, it, 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 my GA rehearsals, GA was the name of the group, of course. Every Monday night we would rehearse. So because it was like a community choir thing, I wanted to make sure we was all at least on the same page. So my mom bought me this, you know, Dake's Bible and I really kind of dug into it like, whoa. I started getting like a little revelation like, when I think of the goodness of Jesus is not in the Bible, I thought it was, you know, stuff like that, you know, and I started having what I call tag sessions, talk about God. So before we rehearsed, I, I did a little lesson, 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 and I started kind of growing in the word just from sharing it with GA every Monday night. No engagements, no nothing, but every rehearsal, we're having like this little Bible study. So really, GA was your first church? GA was the first church. Wow. So that spilled over into my little engagements in the area, like, hold on, we was talking this week, y'all, about, did y'all know that Moses? So I would just do that at the engagements, and then certain people would be like, you can preach a little, come back from my youth, and I would start preaching engagements, and so preaching, I knew, was something I love to do. I just like to communicate, yeah. 
if it's music, if it's preaching, if it's teaching, if it's mentorship, I like to, I'm, I'm a communicator. If it's radio, if it's whatever, if it's this right here, I'm a communicator. So uh, uh, the medium of pastoring came about when we moved to Orlando. My wife and I moved to Orlando about five years ago. And I, I kind of knew, I, I kind of knew I was called to pastor. I wanted to, le I wanted to, uh, I, I knew I had a voice and I wanted to use it to, to spread the truth and not these rules. Mm. Not these rules, <laughs> not these systems. I really had a, a burden for that. And so, uh, you know, God, it, it, the timing kind of came about. We kind of sensed the area of Orlando, and we kind of started the church. It's called Live. It's in Orlando. And it, it's from, of course, Ezekiel 37. Can these dry bones live? Mm. Yeah, live. Prophesy to them. Speak to them. Encourage them. Bless them. And they will live. And we're seeing that everywhere. And I love that the name of the church it's like a command, you know what yeah. I mean? Live, you know, finances, yeah. uh, 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 businesses, dreams, you know, may it go from death to life in the name of Jesus. And it also explains your, your energy, live. I, when you look at it, it looks live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whenever I think Thai trip, I think live, yeah. you know? So your church being called live, when I first saw it, you thought it was live. I thought it was live. I said, that made sense. I said, yeah. I said, that made sense. Pastor of live church. <laughs> I mean, it, that's, I just immediately what I what I thought. Right. So when it comes to so your your song your songwriting, what is mm -hmm. your songwriting? This is the devil up here flying around. I'm gonna get him. It's a little gnat, and I can't stand them John Brown gnats. <laughs> um, I don't know what is up here after. I think it, I don't know. Maybe go ahead. Um, I got no ain't thinking. <laughs> no sir. <laughs> 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 Ain't go my mouth. No, 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 you good. It just. <laughs> and this thing, <laughs> y'all gonna see me vomit. All right. <laughs> That's the thing. That's why I don't like going to the country. I be sending emails. I see y'all family you next year under the tent. Outside with all them things. <laughs> Your songwriting technique, these songs. Your, your, your songwriting, what is your, how, how do you, when you got to write a song, yeah. what do you do? I play, I play first. So I don't just have a whole notebook of all these words. I, I play, you know, and I, I usually sit around, my band was called Soundcheck at the time. We would just sit around and just jam all the time. And I would just stand up at some point and grab the mic like James Brown, like, Tint! that's why I knew every, I knew everything. People say I got a lot of energy, but I just know everything everybody's doing. So it's like, bap, boop, bap, boop, bap, woo. And they're like, oh my God, he's amazing. But I just, I know what everybody's doing. So I, I create from the jam sessions and playing. And if it feels good and if it blesses me, like David playing and King Saul and evil spirits is coming out of King Saul. He ain't had no lyrics to that. It was the music. So I'll just play the music. And if it, if it you know, added value to me in that way, I will add words to it. So that's, that's kind of how it happens. What's this last song that I've, I've heard? Um, well, I, I'm not gonna say last song, but it's the, the song that, that caught me. Um, the one you said you had like a tr trouble with it, like with, with people embracing it at first. When you think about whether to make it, put it on the radio or oh, not. Yeah. 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 What, what, that, song. that song was We Gonna Be All Right. How many of you heard We Gonna Be All Right? We Gonna Be All Right? We Gonna Be All Right? <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about that song. Well, I just, you know, certain, certain. As far as radio is concerned, mm -hmm. all right, let's talk about this song because that's song. what you that's what you asked right, about. Song. Okay, the but if you want to talk about no, it, no, 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 I'm gonna follow you. <laughs> <laughs> the song, um, uh, and I think it was about five years ago, six years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it was under the Obama administration. It was just a whole bunch of killings of of of, of blacks, and um, I kind of had this song around then, mm -hmm. and I taught it to the group and. I just never released it for some reason. I mm. did work it out instead of that. Because I was like, I'm not going to have too much of this. Yeah. Like you said, 808s. <laughs> I ain't going to you know, beat the church upside the head with this new sound, too. I ain't going to have two on the same album. So, mm -hmm. I said, <laughs> so I said, let me go with work it out. Let me see how that do. That did good. So now I'm trying. I, when this whole stuff started happening, yeah. 2020 hit us. I was like, oh, this is the perfect time to release that song. And... 
you know, a lot of people was putting out pandemic songs and it just really sounded sad. I don't want to, yeah, <laughs> like I get it. We were going through and I'm like, this is not a way to encourage. I can, I can meet you on your level by writing a song right. like that, but right. I can't pull you up if I write a song like that. Yeah, okay. So I wanted to pull the people of God up. I want to pull our people up. Yeah. So we're going to encourage ourselves in a celebratory way if we trust the word of God and, we, and if he's done it before. I mean, we have no doubt how these things are going to end because if we believe that all things work together for good. So I wanted to celebrate the fact that we believe that it's going to get better, mm. not celebrate the fact that it's getting better. We wait mm. till it starts getting better to celebrate. That's you got to start celebrating the fact that you believe. Yeah. You know, I had fainted unless I believed to see yeah. the goodness of the Lord in yeah. the land of the living. Yeah. Now, so you're already preaching. <laughs> no, so I, I yeah. see why, you, why you're pastoring yes, because you, you're, it seems like your heart, even in the music, is still to, to reach. Yes, sir. And so every Sunday you're at your church preaching. Yes, sir. Now, how has that been? How many years has it been? It's been four years this Easter that just passed. Okay, let's celebrate that. You know, pastors Thank are you. giving up. <laughs> be giving up? Yeah, they, yeah, they're giving up. <laughs> they yeah, are. suicide rate amongst pastors oh, no, for real. over the last three years. That's, that's real talk. Hard. And I think a lot of that's because, uh, uh, I, well, I don't know why. It's different reasons for everybody. But let me just follow your questions. Uh, <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> I like the ad lib. That's where we get get the message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I, 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 I don't, I don't know if I even approach pastor in the same okay. as everybody. When I first came to live, I said, listen, y'all. My first core value to you all, besides love and all of the great and all of that, is God dependence. My first va core value is God dependence. You are not about to wait for me to lay hands on your back for your back to be healed. You gonna go like this, or you gonna get somebody <laughs> to do it with you? And God, because pastors love being dependent on. I ain't, oh, no, 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 no. Let me stop saying Ooh. that. People love depending on pastors. Okay, okay. Let me say it like that. Okay. I, I think both of them true. Okay, but I got the same spirit you do. Yeah. I got the same Holy Ghost, the same God that you do. So you're not going to look to me for everything supernatural when everything supernatural is inside of you. So I preach empowerment. I preach God dependence. That's why we were good during the uh, pandemic. Live was healthy. Live is still, still healthy because... It wasn't about being in the physical building. Wow. I'm probably the only pastor to be like, y'all know y'all ain't got to come to church. You ain't know y'all ain't got to come here to make it to heaven, right? Whoa. You know you ain't got to do that, right? You know you don't have to get, you don't have to. You I'm, say that? Oh, yeah. I said the Bible says forsake not the fellowship, but you can right. do that at your house. Yeah. You can do that on Thursday. It don't mean Sunday morning. So that's, mm. that's the stuff I'm, I'm talking about. So mm. when you come here, you choose to be here, and we benefit by the choice, yeah. not by the obligation. By the choice and not the obligation. If it's an obligation, you don't benefit, which is why a lot of church religious people don't have the benefits of what they're believing. Because to them, it's an obligation. They feel like they have to. Teach them they get to. You don't have to. You get to. Mm, you and when get you, to. You, I tell them you ain't. No, nah, I don't say this all the time, but I. Mm. Just like, you don't have to give. You should give. Mm -hmm. Give and it should be given to you. Good measure, pressed down. You should. But you don't have to give it an offering. Don't mm -hmm. get all tense when offering comes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to give. You should. And here are the benefits. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah. And don't just give money. Give love. If you give, give your gifts, give your talents, not just in church. As a child of God. Everyone as a know. child of God, give, period. Mm. We should do that, period. The church, if the church don't get your offering today, Somebody on the street should get it. You should just give. Not mm. So I, 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 if there were no church building, how could I be a Christian? Mm. If everything Christian is church activated, how could I be a Christian outside the church? And I think we learned that last year, or we should have learned that last year. Yeah. So that's how I teach live. That's how I teach live. That, I think that's powerful. And, and that is um, sort of system shaking. That's not the Most norm. Most definitely. So well, do, do you feel as though, if you can describe your ministry in one word, or w what is the word you were born for? Free. 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 Freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, not chains, not bondage, not laws, not rules. Relationship. Relationship is where the freedom is. Relationship with him. And guess what, Mr. Reed? 
He may tell you something that he's not telling me, and he may tell me something that he's not telling you. He may tell Moses, stretch forth your hands. So his anointing is in the hands. But Joshua, everywhere your feet shall tread. So his anointing is in the feet. So we judge each other by our individual words from God. But if I got a relationship, it, it, just, it should free you and free people around you. God got them. You can't save them or send them to hell. God got them. Like, just let go of people. If they don't have lifestyle like you, they don't live like you, they don't share your convictions, they're not yours. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world. And they, so stress comes from trying to own people. That's what I'm saying. The, the church, the pastors are suicidal. You trying to own your church. It's the Lord's church. Let him have it. Moses got so tied up in the people, he missed the purpose. I'm not doing that. I love the people, but they're not mine. They're his. So if someone severely disappoints me and goes against all the things they live, whether it's a leader or not, it's disappointing, but I'm not wrapped in it. I'm not, that you, you are God's. You aren't mine. Mm. And that goes from my kids, yeah. I got for you. real, from I got my you. kids I got to you. anybody listening to me ever, man. I, you, you don't belong to me. I encourage you. I train my, my child and, and children the way that they should go. But I don't get so right. That's, that's a control thing. And if you get embarrassed by the way somebody you know, if you get embarrassed, that embarrassment is like pride because it's how I look. Mm. Pride, uh, uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? There's a seed of pride in there to be embarrassed. Like, oh, I look, I look I, how people view me and view me. But when you let go, when you lose your life, you gain it. Mm. So I lose myself. Like, who's Ty Tribbett? Who's the pastor? Who's the, you know, if you feel disrespected, it's like, who am I? Who, when you lose yourself and start from there, it ain't no stress. It ain't no, and, but we try so hard to hold on to who we think we are and, and, and all of that other stuff. But when you're free in the spirit, there's, there's peace, there's contentment, and there's chill, and I'm chilling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Chilling. Okay, so what is the next big thing? The, or, or well, I'm going to say important thing to you that you're about to take on. And what are we about to see come from you? I, I want to, I'm, I wanna, it's in my heart right now. It's not even, this is like an exclusive. <laughs> well, not like that. But in my heart right now, I haven't shared this with anybody, is a, is a severe conviction. It's going to sound so corny to y'all, and I shouldn't even said that, for the youth, right? I got this severe conviction for the youth. And I want to do, <laughs> I knew somebody was going to say that, something okay. next year. We can talk, you know, later. I want to do something next year for a, a movement uh, for the youth. And I know that sounds like, uh, yeah, but it's, it's serious. So it's a, it's a whole movement that I want to do to turn the hearts of this generation back to the Father. I think there's a whole lot of distractions out there for the young as well as the old. But I feel like the young is left uncovered. I feel like they're not covered. I mean, there's the same temptations for grown and young, so, but I don't think they're covered. And I heard Cardi B talk about, uh, Cardi B was saying something about, maybe somebody posted, I'll choose my man over my child. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Like, if the child says, I know she's you know, daddy touched me or whatever, that I'll choose this, you know. And it just seems like the children are uncovered, not just from stuff like that, but in general. I don't think they're covered from what they're exposed to on their phones. I, I think there is a such thing as being exposed too early. God said, don't touch of the tree of the knowledge <laughs> of good and evil. You ain't supposed to know everything all the time. The knowledge of good and evil was the problem because then you're tempted if you know too much. So I think the kids are uncovered. I think they don't have good support systems. I think the music that we listen to encourage, you know, and I love it. I love trap. That's my I love. I do love you hear me, bro? I, I love, <laughs> if you're gonna pray for me, pray for trap. <laughs> Jesus! Don't pray for me, I'm fine. <laughs> Live, I'm just fine. <laughs> hey, hey, like, hey, hey. You know, you know So just something. Just sometimes just, I be saying some little off. Oh, right. You no, know, but I just let this go through right. my spirit. I, right. I hold so, to the beat. Right. But what is, what is going to be called and how we're going to move it is the thing that I'm most excited about. And excuse me for speaking broad strokes, but you all will hear. Just know you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Yeah! What do we hear? I don't truly know, but <laughs> it's going to be something big that we're going to find out later on. But he first halfway told it right here on Larry. 
Oh, let me rely. Okay. All right, we have 17 more minutes. And, <laughs> and I wanted to give the audience an opportunity. There may be artists and songwriters that may be in here. Um, and I know it was not all easy to get to where yeah, you are. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. That, I, pr I, pr I can't even imagine what you probably went through. But I yeah. want to give people opportunity to ask Ty Tribbett questions. So when we come back from this break, we're going to have um, the mics in the aisle, and you'll be able to ask Ty Tribbett. Is it Tribbett or Tribbett? Right? I don't know which. My dad just told me this year that it's of a French descent, and it's Tribbett. Wow. So I felt all uh, coming to America, you know what I mean? <laughs> Ty Tribet. I mean, so after this break, we come back and we are going to be getting questions from our live audience right here on LRL. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, and we have here with us Pastor Ty Tribet. We found out that's what it is. <laughs> and we're going to take um, questions from the audience and find out some more um, the wisdom that is in this this pastor and artist. Um, so can you share just with Just Ty. You said just Ty? <laughs> I understand. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. All right, just, just tell name. us your name and where, and where you're from. My name is Naita Chesson. I'm from the DMV area in Northern Virginia. What's up? Hey. Uh, we miss you at Ebenezer Amy. Okay. Um, <laughs> did you see T-Pain's reaction to musicians <laughs> submitting music? I did. And what, what is your take on that, on new musicians and how they style their music, um, and where do you see that falling in, what it is you're doing with the youth coming up? Yeah, thank you for that. I do think it's, you know, the, it's, it's, everything is more digital now. You don't hear live musicianship anywhere, unless it's like her or like Bruno Mars and, and, and them. So I do know where he's coming from. I can't imagine the emails he's getting and stuff he's getting, so he spoke out of his frustration. Uh, but as far as the new artists c coming up, you're gonna mimic a sound you know until you come into your own. So I'm not really upset about things sounding the same. It's gonna take a T-Pain or somebody to say, hey, this is your difference. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's gonna take somebody to kind of point out, that's cool that you can do that, but you also got this in you. So to me, I think it, it could take that. So I kind of agree with him, but then I understand at the same well, time. Well, don't we all mimic until we, come yeah, into, you, until we come into our own? Yeah, that's, I, I definitely did that. I, I mimic Bishop Hezekiah Walker, like I said, James Hall stuff, uh, Milton Brunson, Timothy Wright. James Moore, I, uh, you know what I mean? I, all of them until I came into my own as well. Wow. Okay, all right, next question here, name and what city? Uh, Kimberly Bills, uh, Colorado, Denver, Colorado. And I'm actually asking, you said you were gonna start the, um, the music uh, mentorship in August? Yes. So I'm not young, young, okay? <laughs> oh, it's but, not just for young people. <laughs> okay. So, but my style is, um, I sing like songs of the Lord. So they could just, you know, it's the Lord may sometimes come to me like, are we gonna rap right now? Then we're gonna sing right now. And then we okay. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. But so my thing is, uh, my question is, is I guess, where would I be accepted into? Where would you be accepted? Well. Do you? I, I get it. You get it? Uh, it's I, I mean, I get, hard. I get it because if, 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 if she just flows. Yeah, she got all these different um, things that she do. Well, the first thing she need to find out what in the whole hell in the heaven she wants to do. <laughs> the first thing she wants to do. Which one you best? Because you, you can't right. do all of that. Pick one. Right. And then what you be <laughs> <laughs> So what, which, which one is like to your heart? I would say singing. Singing, Sing, just singing. and just flowing. Okay. Okay. Do you write songs or do you just it always in the moment? Um, I do write, but they'll, uh, yeah, I do write. I, I don't want to go all into it. But yeah, I will, I, will have to, I will have to say you will have to know the space you want to go into, and you have to honor it to a degree. I will never go, I will tell all new musicians, don't just, and artists, don't just go in with your new swag, like, you have to receive it this way, this is the new wave. I say honor what's already established, like the Trojan horse, get in there first, you know what I mean? Then when you get in there, you can open up and let them know you know, all the rest that's inside you, but honor the space first. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. All right. That's good advice. Thank all right, you. name and where you are from. Byron Burnside, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. So, oh, real quick, hold on real quick, I got you. Looking sharp, bro. Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, real quick, um, how do you pronounce who you are within the atmosphere 
when your surroundings is denouncing your mentality. One more time. So how do you pronounce who you are within the kingdom when your surroundings is denouncing who you are me mentally? Can, can you give me an example? Yeah, so, how you fought, how you, you sort of- Oh, how I literally You did. sort of explained it. You know, how you could be booked against the system and then you're yeah. doing your own thing. Well, when, I, when, when he says, and as we said, I, I kind of bucked against the system, I just be. I didn't pronounce myself, I didn't announce myself, I didn't say this is the new wave, I just was. And who, who I was bucked against the system. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, my, you understand? So it's not like a, it's, I just say be who God has called you to be. Be the artist or singer or whatever, that you, regardless of the, the system, don't focus on getting into systems. You understand what I'm saying? Or bucking against them. Excuse me, yeah, bucking against it. Yeah. Like, because the, the strategy shouldn't be let's buck against the system. The strategy is let's show the system who we are. Ah. You understand what I'm saying? And God will announce you. You understand? Okay. I, don't have the, I, don't have the, I don't have the same blueprint that everybody has. Literally, God has literally, for real, opened a lot of doors for me. So I don't have the, you know, have, make sure you got a portfolio and this and that. And that. I, didn't, I didn't have all of that stuff. I just was who I was. And back in those days, the grassroots thing was, 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 was way bigger. You know, 20 years ago, there was no social media, so word of mouth was bigger then. So it takes more now to get seen now or to get some type of awareness of who you are now because everybody's in the same pool. But back when I started, it wasn't like that, so I don't have the same process as everybody. Yeah, and what I was going to say, um, just to explain what happened to me, because I pastored for 20 years. The only thing people knew of me was in the pulpit prophesying, laying hands. And my ministry is aggressive when I'm in the pulpit. Now, then when I left that world and began to do entertainment and sit and talk and at the food, that was a, uh, they were like, and what are you doing? You know, I said, I'm just being myself. Anybody that knew me knew I was just being myself. So I just practiced on being. And that alone causes you to show up where you need to show up. Yeah. And, and it will speak. And it, it may buck against the system. Yeah. It, it may cause a reform. It, it will evangelize others. Right. But I just put my focus on being and being the best version of that being. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's right. what I said. No, <laughs> <laughs> you better take credit for my words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on, baby. What's your name? Where are you from? Tiffany Bryant, Dayton, Ohio. How you doing? I don't really have a question. I, well, you need the, to sit down. We ask you whoever wants to. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm back. Go ahead, on. <laughs> Kendall forced me to come up here. So, but he did. He turned around and said, "Get up there he now." All time doing so. something. And why you got that hat on in church? Oh, that's me too. Don't say that. Look, at, I'm blam, blam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but real, for, for real, for real. I okay. really just want to. Um, I want to sing with you. I love you and your energy, but I want to sing with you. Really? I do. Okay. She can sing? You can sing? You fought Lord of a minute. Now let me get, get in my Kimberell spirit. <laughs> That's my girl. Let, I don't let, do let, that. Let me, do no, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm being Kim. Let, well, yeah, we want to hear you. I can say that you're wonderful, but it doesn't seem good enough. Oh. I can say that you're kind, but that would miss the mark. I can say that you're beautiful, but to me you are so much more. How do I communicate? Exactly who you are. I'm trying to convey the sentiments of my heart and say I really do appreciate the way you brighten up my day. I can't find the words to describe you. It would take a million years to explain the way I feel. You are the epitome of everything I'll ever need. I'm so in awe yeah. 
of you. Lord, you leave me speechless. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Girl, you better sing. Oh, Lord. Woo. I don't know why you want to sing with me. You sing way better than me. <laughs> Woo! Have your people call my people and my people your people. <laughs> Woo! You better go ahead. Thank you, uh, Hat Man. <laughs> That's Natchez. <laughs> they, they know I love some good singing, so that, that, okay. that was smart. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh oh, oh. Uh, 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 uh. What's up, Big R? No, I, I have to say this. So, everybody, on August 1st, when the Stellar Wars comes on, I need everybody to watch it. Let me tell you what happened. Wow. This young man right here was the host of the show. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I, I, can't, I can't express how important it is for people of faith to show balance. <gasps> You're going to see a dignified, classy man <gasps> host the show, unlike anything you've ever seen him do. He's not gospel artist. Oh. He's not pastor. He is a refined black man in front of the camera. Oh, wow. You've got to watch this show so that people can see the balance of black men in faith. Great. That might make me watch it now. Because I seen some of them outfits on that Stella Award carpet. Now, Ja'Kalen Carr! Did y'all see how she was dressed? Woo! Uh, I liked it. No, I ain't gonna say that. She's too young. But she was beautiful. And she hosted with you, right? Thank you. Yes. You My heart is still. Thank you for that. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for I that. I mean, um, so so he. Yeah, wasn't, we wasn't clowning. I wasn't playing. You know. Really? No. So what, you, you know what, know what I'm saying? What I was, had you so calm? What had me so calm? I mean, it didn't. Every moment don't call for everything, and I think I look young, and that's good. But I'm a grown man. I've been married 24 years, oh, wow. and I got two girls. One is 18. One is 15. I'm 45. Wow. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, you do look young. You do look young. <laughs> but you, you understand what I'm saying? So, so I was anxious to show that side. That's why I'm so overwhelmed right now. I was anxious to show him not to jump around. Black. Now, when I performed, yeah. I put my 21-year-old shoes on. <laughs> but I was so excited for the opportunity to be poised. And everything you just said, it, thank you. Especially coming from him. No, he, he's he a master drop. host. Yeah. This is his profession, and I honor you for that. So thank you so much. You did not have to say that, and I appreciate it. Bless me, man. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to watch. Now, Stella Wars ain't paying me to say this, but <laughs> we're going to all watch. Let's, let's support. Hey, and then you. I, yeah. Let's support. Okay, Vicky got the mic. I guess she got a question. What's up, Auntie? Hi, boo. Do you remember the song we did together? Okay. That Would anybody feel right. like praising? Oh, Would anybody feel like praising? Would anybody feel like praising God? <laughs> yeah. you, you, I remember that. That, that song's so bad. You remember that? <laughs> oh, we still got, okay. Okay. <laughs> you want me to stand up or no? You can stand, yes, stand. Okay. Listen, I sat there tonight and the reason why I'm standing is because I had to maneuver around three marriages. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I made it to, to where, because I'm not going to ever speak about none of my children's fathers negative nowhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you, don't, you don't see that. I didn't even know that what was up there was going on there, but even that was good. But Ty, I, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to ask you this. I think you are one of the greatest. You came out so hard. The devil was after you. Mm -hmm. right? And when you got up in the morning and put on, got out the bed and put your two feet on the floor, the devil looked at one of his, his demons and said, oh man, he up. And the reason why I say that is because I sat there tonight and I want you to tell them in your own words why. Did you come to me and just jump in my arms? That's all I'm going to say. The rest I'm going to leave on you. <laughs> Auntie, every time I see you, I explode with love expression. And it's not an initiation. It is a response. I know it. Because that is all you have given and have shown me 
yeah. since I met you. Yeah. You're an icon. You are a living legend in our midst. And for you, amen. And for you to embrace myself, my family, and my crazy behind ministry the way you did in those times, it was an anchor to, our, to my love for you. I, I have no other response but overwhelming love and honor for you. And you know what? We know, and if that's something, you don't have to share it, but we know. I was, we were getting ready to do that song. We were getting ready to do a video, and the enemy came in and busted that all up. And I never, I never got to talk to you. I never, I cried. Me and Nisi, your mom, we cried and cried and cried. And I'm hearing you. You are so well. You are absolutely whole. After a hole in your life, H-O-L-E, you're absolutely W-H-O-L-E. And it's so good to see. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. That's great. That is great. Well, our time is up. We have one minute left, so we stand on schedule. Now, wasn't this amazing tonight? This, this was such a God-ordained event. So many things have, have happened. Is, is, there, um, is Steve in the audience? Steve. Can, can you come out here, Steve? my man. Let, let me tell you, y'all may not know who he is, but he's a, a mover and a shaker behind the scenes. Um, I, I don't want to say this um, in front of everybody. It was an event that, hold on, let me stand up because somehow or another my draws keep coming down. <laughs> I keep feeling all this air back here. <laughs> my back gonna catch a cold and my crack gonna be coughing. <laughs> Look, now, <laughs> I hope y'all probably got a whole eye for that whole cheek was sitting there. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay, well, the, <laughs> well, it was for real. All right, so it was where Vincent. What year was that, Vincent? Two thousand and fifteen. Okay. Um, sh long story short, got saved fifteen. Um, got filled with the Holy Ghost. Didn't watch TV for about 10 years, only watched Bobby Jones' gospel. Slept on the floor, wanted to know God, wanted to know spirit, done that for years. Lived a fasted life all the way up to 2017. So 2017, two years prior to that, while pastoring all those years, I started doing some gospel music. And I had a vision of being on Bobby Jones. That's why I kept watching for nine years. So when I did my little rinky-dink um, gospel CD, <laughs> I didn't have all the money to do it proper, but the, the lyrics is bad. Go check it out. And Bobby Jones, we went somewhere, and Bobby Jones heard us, and it was his last show that everybody wanted to be on. And he requested and told Miss Coleman to get us up there. I think he saw us in Jamaica. So we went up there. When we came back, I was just filled with that energy and I got a glimpse in the future. And, then, and I saw in the spirit this woman with gold hair that was leading me through these two doors. And I was walking through the door. Um, I end up hearing Vincent or somebody over talk about Holly Carter. And she um, was having an event. We had just got back home. I turned right back around, drove back to the event. When I got there, they set me right behind her on the second row. Why? I don't know. And I sat right behind her, and her from the Lord said, move to Atlanta, da 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 Well, we went to another meeting, and I didn't know you. It was called Hollywood Confidential. So, now if I'm not mistaken, who was on the stage that night? It was, uh, yeah. Erica, Erica Campbell, Michelle Williams, Holly Carter, Phil Fortin, and Ty, Ty Trivet. Trivet. Okay, all right. So, you see what I'm going somewhere, see. You know how Eddie Long used to say, watch this, watch this. There you go. Now, watch this, watch, 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 watch. I don't know what you're watching, but watch. But, and, then, and so, in that, that was like one of the shakeups. It was like a, 
hold on, I, felt, I, I just felt like somebody was, try, was telling me, you better pay attention, something is different. And that conference that you had and Holly Carter had, the Merce, Merce Summit, I think that ended up being, I know it was the seed for us being here right now. Because that's when I heard, during that season of my life, to move to Atlanta and start you know, working in entertainment. And I started Larry Live. And so for this event to take place and get tied here, I was able to hit Steve up and for you to be a yes, when you easily could have been a no come a little crazy. And, and, and to trust me, you know, to, I got two sides too. And so, um, and to handle this, this is such a, a prophetic moment. It's, it's like a full circle moment for me and, and those that know me, my team, and for Vincent, because we was there together, for us now to be standing here on a stage that I paid for. <laughs> Lord, y'all looking at a half a million dollars, I just want y'all to know. And, for, and to put on this event, and then to have you guys here, which it was y'all's panel that was the seed and inspiration for us doing what we, what we did. And I know there's no way you could have known that when you've done Hollywood Confidential, and you probably looked at it just been that event, but then no, Larry Reed was on the fourth row listening to what you guys were saying and was receiving a call out of North Carolina to move to Atlanta to establish the MBN network after 20 years of pastoring and then build all of this. So uh, every, all these people right here are responsible. You're responsible for this event. You have a hand in that. And I just wanted to honor you and, and, and thank you for being a yes. You could have said, Larry, I uh know. -uh, Erica ain't coming. Ain't nobody coming. <laughs> but you were a yes, and you, and you tapped time for me. So thank you so much. I want y'all to give him a hand. Yeah, yeah. That was Steve. All right.